So welcome to the end of the 2035 season, a brand new format for the channel so hopefully this video goes down well, make sure you do drop a like and a comment below, let me know your views as we play through the episode, let's get into it. This is just an intro, you better believe it. Jesus, that was bad. <sighs> yep, welcome to the series. So this season was the first year in our brand new stadium. Still a bit disheartened that the stadium wasn't named after the manager, but the Eggers and IK Stadium, I think the pitch I've gone with suits really well. This is from an AI generator. And yeah, I think it's a solid looking picture. It does suit how it would look. I mean, there's no mountains like that near the stadium in Eggerson, but we'll go with it. I see here it can be expanded up to 16,500 as well, so we would take that without a shadow of a doubt. So as we look to recap how the season has gone, we're going to start by looking at the league fixtures for the first half of the season, then we will look at the summer transfers, then recap the second half of the season going into a bit more detail in that now in the next video we will be doing a um rankings update which will take place in the summer of 2036 and for that we will recap the whole european campaign starting in the summer of 2035 the first couple of episodes you might think why we're jumping back so far but it will actually make sense separating the european campaign to the domestic campaign um, in that video as well we will recap the winter transfers that do happen so we start the season fairly solid um first month we picked up 10 points out of 12 beating Sognal, Junkeren, Molde before drawn at home to Valerenga. But you can see four clean sheets in a row, and that was continued with two more clean sheets against Olesund and Engrarud, which saw us top of the league, and with a possible 16 points out of 18, I was delighted. We did then go down 4-0 to odds. Bit disappointing, a bit of a shock to be honest. Bounced back with a victory over Vik in another clean sheet, but we then did lose to Stromps got set and we were slipping up regularly in games where we should be winning at this point and I was getting a bit annoyed for the last couple of years with this situation. Um, June went well with 7 points out of possible 9. Starbeck and Berdeglim victories a 0-0 against Lillstrom. But as you can see, that means in the first three months of the season, we did only concede in two games. So I was fairly pleased with how that was going. And going into July when the transfer window was open, I definitely was thinking positive about how we were doing. So the first sign we picked up in the summer window was from Generation Foot, where Samaria came from. Papis Gomez comes in on a free transfer, 19 years old, capped by Senegal since he joined us and a very solid player. Playing for our youth team this season, seeing how he's going to develop, but I do have hope he could be a very solid player. Now coming in on a free transfer recommended by our scouting team is Sebastian Fagundes. And he's nowhere near as good as I hoped. He really can't pass a ball or anything, but maybe there's a chance to turn around a bit of a decent profit on him. Paid zero, valued 400k, so keep an eye on him and see if we can cash in on him. Runa Gullerud comes in from Stromsgod set for £75,000. He did fairly well for their B team, did well for their youth team as well, topped some stats last season in the under-19 league, so we decided to take a punt on him. Again, a player who maybe we can cash in on, if not our coaching team can develop him a little bit more and move him on to another Norwegian club. Now, a player who did really well at San Ezolf and looked very, very good in the youth team last season, scoring a lot of goals for them. We brought him in for 150k, Daniel Ascot. I'm coming in from a local side in San Ezolf. I think it was... Nice to try to bring in players from local teams, and he looks very solid. I did look at him when he was a Tromser a couple of years ago, but he wasn't on my radar as someone who I kind of fancied. But he did really well for the youth team for Sanez, so I have decided to take that punt. So we spent some big money here on Diet Ma Galen, and yeah, this was a bit of a mistake to bring him in now. So it turns out it actually played for two clubs this season in Victoria, Colin and Ostravine. 
So that means he's actually not going to be able to play a game for us until next season. But coming in for seven and a half million and being given a good few months to learn the language is a Dietmar Gehrling. And he looks a very, very solid central defender. Seven and a half million is a bit steep, but he looks very all rounded. Only 19, I think he could develop into a very, very good player. Shame he can't play any games for so while, but he looks good. And the final signing to look at is Brian Alderate. And wow, labelled as a wonder kid. And I can see why. He looks very, very good. Going to be playing the attack midfield strata. And I'm really, really impressed by this kid. And that took our spending up to 18.25 million with that 6 million sign from Nashville. But we did lose some players, some players who I really didn't want to lose, but they moved on. So let's go through them, shall we? So the outs throughout this window. First off is Snow went on loan to Pau. Wasn't really featuring for us. 21 years old now. Been in the club for a few years. Um, I do have hope he can come back and develop into something, but he's gone out on loan for this season. The next player who has left us picked him up on a free transfer, was it? No, 130k we paid for him, for Nadinga, only a couple of years ago now if you remember. But after a couple of loan spells, we ended up selling for 2.3 million plus 50% of next sale. And I think that's an absolute bargain to move him on for that. Um, bargain? No, a steal. Not a bargain. If, if anything, the complete opposite. I feel like I robbed them blind. But 2.3 million that rises to. Uh, Ascot I sent back on loan to San Ezulf, who we signed him from. Uh, Joey Bastians, this is upsetting. So Joey has left us for five million after being with the club for seven years. He just kept complaining, and the problem was a lot of other players came to me and said they didn't understand why I was holding him against his will. So we've ended up having to let him go. Five million is an absolute steal for them. Maybe we look at bringing him back in the future because he is so versatile. But for now, he has gone off to play in France. The next player for 8 million rising and 9.5 is our young central defender right back in Jogle. I'm glad I've sold him. I'm I'm glad I've sold him. 37 games he played for us, signed from Vikings to Wanger. We signed for 3.5, sold him for Ryzen and 9.5. I think that is money well done. Um a young player went to Porto. There was nothing I could do. He was on a on a youth contract and he wouldn't agree to stick around. Now, this is a great bit of business. 38 games, only nine goals from the Shadow Striker. Jotten has left us to go and play in Spain for Cordoba. And I just had to cash in on him. 5.5 million, I think, was well done. We made 1.5 million on him. He wasn't doing well for us. He just didn't perform how I needed him to. So we've ended up cashing in, getting these very high wages off the wage bill as well. Um, Linskoog has gone to Marseille, another situation where a youth contractor player was poached. Um, Jules has gone to Yervon Loan and finally Leonandro Gonzalez our young central defender now he came as a full back I ended up retraining him when we moved to a back three and he did really really well if I go to the history you can see here when he finally played as a central defender he got 7.16 average and did really really well so for 5 million rising a 7 to PSV I didn't want to sell him for so little but again rejected Players come, why are you holding someone at the club who doesn't want to be there? We've ended up losing him. So if we go back to the competition, sorry, the schedule side, and look at how the rest of the season went. So in July, we had a bit of an up and down. One draw, two defeats, Rosemarie Sogdal, victories against Shelsas and Junkeren. In August, we got four victories, beating Mulder, Valerenga, Olesen and Garud. We then played odds and got a victory before losing a Viking. Stromscott said Starbeck and Bird Glimt all ends in victories. But a disappointing end to the season ended up costing us. Defeat to Lilstrom before a draw to Bran, victory over Rosmug 5 0, and a draw at home to Shelsas on the final day saw us finish in second place. But we were a massive, massive 13 points. Off odds. Now we finished four points clear of Sogendal, 
but odds won 24 of the 30 games and i was blown away by this now one of the things i do want to mention if i go to the club vision supporter side they were livid that we didn't challenge for the title they were livid also upset you can see here in terms of the board that i didn't spend the original transfer budget well i am sorry for not bankrupting the club but um yeah so we came second we qualified for the champions league again but the board players supporters are disappointed that we didn't challenge for the title finishing 13 points off but odds just had a season to remember now in terms of how things have ended then in a bit more detail for the league average possession wise we came third at 55 percent in terms of goals we were the fourth highest with um 62 goals odds with 79 finished the best best there defensive record wise odds with only 24 goals conceded in 30 games we did only concede 27 and 30 so less than games played which is something to be really proud of so i am very very pleased with that um, in terms of average attendances, we were at 7,902. So our first season in our new stadium, and we're just under 8,000 with a 98% full capacity. So really, really pleased with that. Very, very solid record in terms of people coming to see games. In terms of transfer spend, we made £22 million this year, which is nice. And... How much are we spending? We are spending 9.12 million a season on wages at the minute, which is high, but still 10 million less than Mulder, which blows my mind, considering we, we've done well racking up second places in a row now, um, considering how little we spend and compared to some of the other teams here. Fourth highest at the minute, and we do have some big earners. Um, our new attack midfielder from um, Nashville on 35k a week. You have Sholby from left back on 29k. Diaz on 28. So we do have some high earners in there. Yeah, we're still not spending that much. Now, when we come in to look at players, then so top goal scorer for the season was Samaru, 33 goals. And the most upsetting thing is he picked up an injury and missed the last five games of the season. Or he would have had his best goal scoring record ever, I think. 21 goals he ended up scoring. Missed the last two games of the season. 21 goals scored. His best ever was 21. Honestly think he would have gone over that because he was in goal scoring form this year. Second highest was Diaz with 10. Diric with 8. Sholby with 7. Foss, um, Fossadal with 5. Now Fossadal. That might be a name you're looking at and thinking Fossadal. Fossadal. I recognise that name. He came through the intake at the start of this season. He's played 17 games for us now, and he is our starting right wing back. Let me know what you think about him. This is probably the question of the episode. What do you think of Ge Fossadal? Because he looks insane. Like, when I look at him, I just get excited about the future of the club. So in terms of assists... Shelby did it. 18 assists. We spoke about last season he was very poor. Last season he didn't perform how we would have hoped. Well, he stepped up. He stepped up with 18, sorry, 16 assists in all competitions. I thought I said 18 on the other screen. That says 16 there. Yeah, it says 18 there. But when I go on here, it's only 16. I don't understand that. But if we go under the FM stag stats, for example, and go as a... We can go as a winger. Compare him as a winger. So dribbles per 90. 4.13 he's doing. Elite players do 4.69. Crosses completed. 2.37. Well above elite. Sprints per 90. 24.9. Well above. Um, Opposition key passes. Sorry, all player key pass. 2.12. Well above elite. And expected assist per nine zero point four, which again is above elite. If we go on full back, so tackles per ninety two point seven three, which is just below average. Interceptions three point six one, above elite. Pressures two point nine one, in between average and elite. Two point three seven for crosses per ninety, well, well, well above elite. And progressive passes at a three point five two, is actually below poor. 
to where he lack he's lacking is them progressive passes. But I love this and being able to actually investigate how my players are doing compared to others. So second top assist is Ale Brian, I always call him, with seven assists in his 16 starts. Samara picked up six as well, Brun with five. But our team's looking really, really solid. They are looking really, really solid. Now, coming in next season, we have um, Galen who can come in as well. I have been training Thomas, our young Chilean um, central mid, as a libero, and he's doing okay. He's learning it fairly well. He's not played many games. When he has played, he's, he's looked okay. So I've got to say I'm fairly pleased with him. Uh, Brun in centre mid this season has started to look a little bit better. How is he looking actually wise? Let's have a look. So open play key passes 1.51 below, sorry, in between average and elite. Progressive passes 6.78, so it's just below elite. 0 0.13 for assists, that, that's where he's lacking. He's lacking the assists, he's just above poor. Dribbles of 1.65 are in between average and elite, closer to average. Pass completion at 85%, that's poor. That's in between poor and average. So, do you know, it's up and down in terms of how he's doing comparing. So looking at the rest of the Norwegian league quickly. Um, then we'll go into our youth team. So Shelsas mid in the playoffs. Grerud and Junker in a guaranteed relegation. So up to the second tier. Kongsvinger are coming up along with Ul Kisser. Going down are Ranheim, Fredrikstad and Sotra. Coming up from the third tier is going to be Sjordals Blink. And going down is Flora, Ullern and Elverum. And from the second, sorry, from third tier, second division. KFU and Oslo, who just got draw in the top flight in real life. Fair play to them. Going down Sogndal B, Ollison B and Tiller. So fair play to some of them teams there. You see if we can B team finish a mid-table. Wish our B team was in it. Right, so let's have a look at our under 19s then. So we finished in fourth place in the league this year. 26 games played, won 11, drew 12. We only lost three games, but we drew way way too many games and i think that was the biggest issue we had in terms of how players performed who did the best etc i've got to give a special shout out to the likes of this Mela and figure he seems always pop up on my list he doesn't look great but seven goals seven assists he's had a decent season Mala with eight goals 14 assists he's also had a fairly Fairly decent, fairly solid season for the under under 19s. And Egerdink, 18 years old now. Next year will be his final year in the youth team. His final year to secure a contract to stay at the club. Picked up 14 goals and 11 assists in our youth team. I'm not sure. I mean, I think we're at the point where them type of players will just move on to other teams within Norway because they're just not, not quite there, not quite good enough to stick around secure a spot in our first team so in terms of financially we are going to be ending the season with 81.5 million in the bank a 44 million profit um 207k a week on wages where we have budget 684 and we have 55 million to spend over the winter will we spend it i i strongly doubt it but we're in a very, very strong position to be honest and something i'm very proud of that we are building a very good financial back into this club and have given us a chance to develop just a little bit more i mean we have our new stadium which is something to be very very proud of and yeah if we can get up to sixteen half thousand and we're selling it out we can only be delighted with that can't we so that is the end of the 2035 season no it's not no it's not no it's not the cup we forgot to talk about the cup. So the cup campaign started against Trevor Darlin, and we got a 3-0 victory. Durich, Linskoog, and Dunksjak. We then came up against Brummendal and got 2-0 victories. Samare and Rogda on the score sheet. Jeller Olsen were next, and these are the type of teams we've slipped up against in the past. With 3-1 victories, Samare with two and Fossadal, our youngster, on the score sheet in this game. We then had probably the toughest game so far. In fact, guaranteed 
toughest game so far against Rosenborg in the fourth round. And we went through on penalties after Jotten scored our goal in normal time. They missed two of their penalties, which saw us through to the quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals, came against Olsen and got a 3-1 victory. Before we played odds in the semifinals, a 2-1 victory in that game in extra time. Before we came up against Valerenga in the final, and as you can see, the penalty which won the game was scored, and we lifted the trophy, the cup, our first ever cup title in this save, and I was absolutely over the moon to say that we were cup champions. I was so happy about it, I almost forgot to tell you in this video. Absolutely rookie mistake, but what a way to end the video. Join me in the next video where we will recap our European campaign as we continue to develop how this video format should go. I'll try not to forget the cup next time.